Harms from Signal Fire Coaching here. I want to talk for a moment today about the difference between being smart and being intellectually intense. Being smart or being bright uh, or being talented academically uh, are ways of describing being good at school, being able to learn things quickly, uh, being able to synthesize information and put it to use. Being intellectually intense is slightly different. Being intellectually intense is often like an upgrade on smart in terms of capability of synthesizing really complex ideas. Uh, and it often goes along with a need to get to the bottom of everything. So when you think about Einstein sitting in the patent office working on incredibly complicated ideas and formulas and proofs uh, because he couldn't let go of the idea, because he, he couldn't stop. That's intellectually intense. When you think of Edison trying over and over and over and over and over, failing and failing and failing to come up with a light bulb and then finding it, that is also intellectually intense. But it doesn't have to be combined with that level of persistence and that level of specificity and that level of complexity. Intellectual intensity is the two-year-old who always wants more, 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 more of whatever toy it is that they're exploring. The four-year-old who is still asking why about everything. The child who watches a show about something that seems quite simple and straightforward and has questions about plot holes for days, who can't seem to let go of a line of questioning. Often, people who are intellectually intense have hobbies that they may not have shared with anybody, that they have a life that looks like they go to work and they have a kind of average job and they have kids who are in sports and activities and they have a social life where they don't talk about the fact that they go home and they've got the best stamp collection in the world or they have read all of the classics of obscure Christian theology from the Middle Ages or they have uh, a bug collection or they go to an art museum every single week to soak in a deeper appreciation of a favorite painting. That constant going back for more, that is intellectually intense. If it happens by yourself, it may look like having a topic that is intellectually challenging, uh, philosophy, math, science, biology, uh, history, it doesn't matter what this topic is, and just always having a book you're reading, or one that's so complicated that you go back and you read it 10, 12, 14 times. If you are constantly looking for more detail in baseball statistics than anyone else around you, that's a form of intellectual intelligence. The intensity probably comes with side effects that you may or may not recognize as part of being intense. And so I just invite you, if you recognize yourself in the description of intellectually intense as opposed to merely smart, have a look for, are there other places that you could describe yourself as intense? It could be in the way your imagination works. It could be in the way your body moves or wants to move. It could be in your emotional connection with um, people, whether it is for good, like really intense emotional connections, or for bad, whether there's sort of depression and loneliness and anxiety in social relationships. Intensity can be a good thing and a bad thing, so it can show up um, in all sorts of ways. Uh, or maybe sensory, like maybe things strike you as particular really beautiful or particularly harsh on a sensory level, whether that's taste or touch or sight or sound. Um, 
because oftentimes people who are intense in one field are intense in another. 